So Fabian, okay, please. Yeah, uh, thanks, Jan. Thanks everybody for coming to the second lecture. I didn't scare you away in the first one. Um, yeah, so just a review briefly what uh, happened on Monday, already a long time ago. So uh, I first talked about kind of try to motivate quadratic differentials by saying that if you have a non compact Calabial and has a structure of an affine quadric bundle over some Riemann surface, then that gives you, if you fiberwise integrate essentially the holomorphic volume form, that gives you a quadratic differential uh, on the base curve. And um, then I talked about a result uh, that if you have a quadratic differential, that gives you a stability condition on the rat Bukaya category of the surface uh, minus it the zero support. phi, because you, you, you know, I, I was disconnected last time for maybe 15, 20 minutes. No, uh, yeah, this just, this just means horizontal foliation. So the, if you want the Z graded Fukaya category, it always depends on the choice of foliation of line field. And it just pick the one which comes from the horizontal foliation of the quadratic That's all that means. So it's wrapped okay. Yeah, it's wrapped around the zeros and poles, and the grading comes from this um, horizontal foliation. Right, that basically tells you kind of if you have uh, a ripcord, if something wraps around the zeros and poles, it should have some degree, and that's that, that depends on the order of the zero and the pole. Um, okay, and uh, yeah, not just that uh, kind of for a single quadratic differential, you get a stability condition, but uh, this correspondence identifies certain components of the space of stability conditions of these wrap from Kaya categories uh, with uh, spaces of pairs of a Riemann surface and a quadratic differential. Um, or you could view this as it's a, it, I talked about how this package of a complex structure of C and a quadratic differential, it's equivalently encoded in terms of a flat metric. So we could either think of it as moduli spaces of human surface plus quadratic differential or flat surfaces. Um, yeah, but one kind of drawback of this approach uh, where you only work with this base uh, curve is that um, here you cannot uh, apply this theory of motivic DT invariance, uh, which uh, needs a proper pre calabial category. Proper means it's kind of finite home spaces. Um, so and definitely these wrap categories are not kind of the kind of categories which you have in this theory, right? And also, I mean, how this is going to be kind of fixed is to go back to this quadric bundle um, and look at the Fukaya category of this higher dimensional thing instead. Although I'm actually not going to study that Fukaya category. I'll do more of a formal construction that uh, conjecturally is the same as, or is a subcategory of that Fukaya category. Right, but yeah, the, the idea for, um, for or plan for today's lecture will be uh, first discuss a kind of very general uh, picture, conjectural picture that uh, was developed by Thomas Yao and then Joyce, uh, which relates special Lagrangians and bridge instability. Then I'll mention the results of Bridge and Smith. So they also uh, identify certain quadratic differentials with stability conditions. And their categories are different. So they're not the rap Kaya category, but there's some pre Calabiao categories. I'll talk about that. Um, and then I'll talk a bit about what are really Calabiao infinity categories. Um, and then how do you get them from, from surfaces? So, I mean, the rap Kaya category is always a one Calabiao surface, but how you can also get, in fact, higher dimensional Calabiao categories from surfaces, in particular. To this will be a special case of that. Richard Smith gives you a three Calabiao category. Um, and then finally, there's a kind of technique of transferring stability conditions from the rap Fukaya category, so this one dimensional category, to the higher dimensional Calabiao categories. And uh, using that kind of explains. Uh, why in this approach here of Britton Smith, they have a three Calabial category, whereas in this other result um, I had with um, Katarka and Kansevich, uh, you have one Calabial category. Okay, so that's the plan. Um, yeah, first, just 
general picture that um, we'll essentially be doing special cases of. Um, so this is a very expected difficult to be conjecture. Um, so the setting is, let's say we have a compact Calabial X here, uh, lowercase omega is the deflecting form and this uppercase omega is the holomorphic Boson form. Um, and then has a Fukaya category whose objects are Lagrangian submanifolds. And uh, yeah, conjecture, which, yeah, it's not, at this point, it's got not, uh, it's fairly precise. It's not 100% precise, but you know, there's some kind of technical details. But uh, I mean, there is a version of the conjecture and it goes something very roughly like this. So we would say there's a stability condition in the sense of Bridgeland on the Fukaya category where so remember to give a stability condition, I needed to basically specify this uh, central charge, this complex number for every uh, class in K-theory. And then I need to specify semi-stable objects. So the central charge is the uh, easy part. So it's just given by integrating uh, the whole morphic volume form, right? So that uses that Lagrangian is something half dimensional and the whole morphic volume form is also a middle degree form. So that makes sense. Um, and then uh, define an object to be semi-stable, uh, it's isomorphic to something which can be supported on a special Lagrangian. So basically it means the special Lagrangians should be the semi-stable object. But um, the point here is just that if you have a special Lagrangian, you can apply some Hamiltonian isotopy. It will be a, an isomorphic object in the Fukaya category, uh, but it's not special anymore. So. Fabian, just historical yeah. question. <clears throat> I don't think that uh, those people really kind of worked with Fukaya categories. So probably it was some geometric statement similar to what you just said, that if you apply a certain flow, then your Lagrangian will flow to something else too. Uh, because I, 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 I don't think that Yao knows what is it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, the, the original work of Thomas and Yao uh, was sort of not uh, glossing over details about Fukaya categories. I mean, they understood that you can have Lagrangians and you can deform them by Hamiltonian isotopy. But even the, the notion of a bridge and stability condition was not yet developed. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, Thomas it, and Yao, it, yeah, uh, yeah, I should, if, if I'm precise here, I should say, you know, these guys didn't formulate the conjecture in this way. They they said something which was sort of it had missing parts, and uh, but one of those missing parts is details about the Fukaya category, and the other missing part is details about what's a stability condition on a mm -hmm. triangulated category. Mm -hmm. And these these things kind of then were developed by Fukaya and Bridgeland, and then Joyce was the one who put this all together. Yeah, so that's uh, I think the history. Um, yeah, and so the special Lagrangian, so it's, if you remember, so this is just a generalization to higher dimensions of this result, which I talked about that um, you have a stability condition on the Fukaya category of the surface, so that um, semi-stable objects correspond to QD6, uh, so it's actually straight lines, right, and uh, the higher dimensional generalization of being QD6, or, or one generalization is the special Lagrangian condition, so it says that uh, yeah, but your Lagrangian, when is it special? So you restrict your holomorphic volume form to L. It's now a top degree form on L. Um, so it kind of makes sense to take its argument. It's a complex valued form. Uh, and this will be indeterminate. Uh, sort of it's only defined up to 2 pi i or 2 pi, right? But um, part of the data of being um, in the uh, an object in this Fukaya category means that this is actually single valued chosen some global some global choice of this argument um, well some global function uh, and that function being constant is the special Lagrangian um, yeah it generalizes uh, this QD6 and this is the generalization to higher dimensions so, right but the, the QD6 was uh, the, the same object as some other curve, perhaps. So we're not requiring, so an object might be semi-stable, uh, even if it's not uh, special Lagrangian, but it would have to be isomorphic to a special Lagrangian. So it's just for, for the elliptic curve. 
when, well, when you uh, mean uh, geodesics, in, you mean the elliptic curve, which. Well, uh, th that's what I'm saying here. That uh, there should be a variant. This is for non-compact collapse. Oh, okay. So in that case, it's really the, this quadratic differential story. It, it was really a non-compact setting because you remove the zeros and poles. Um, uh, but uh, you take the Foucault category with objects supported on, on compact Lagrangians only. Otherwise, it will not be x finite. The whole Bridgeland. Uh, it, yeah, it doesn't need to be x finite. That's uh, not. Uh, you need to write. I need to avoid higher order poles and go only to simple poles and uh, zeros in the quadratic differential picture. Mm -hmm. So there should well, it's yeah, it's not. Uh, Lagrangians sure. should not be just compact. They should also be allowed to go to infinity. But um, I'm not sure about the exact statement. But if you look what what's happening in the surface case, then you're also considering some um, non-compact Lagrangians because they go to the zeros. Uh, no, I mean, you, you you mentioned that it's not quite Calabi-Yau, so it's some Calabi-Yau and some very generalized sense. So then that's a, a variant for non-compact X, but not necessarily Calabi-Yau. Uh, well, it should still have this non-vanishing holomorphic volume form, square of it. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so I, I do think you, yeah, you all, this kind of omega, this uppercase omega is the important ingredient. Okay. Yeah, but I, I'm not, I don't think anybody has really formulated the conjecture here precisely. But I mean, if you look at what we do in the one-dimensional case of Riemann surfaces, we're really doing a kind of non-compact version of this. Um, and also the point is that these quadric bundles are not compact. But... Right, so now the, the idea is to, instead of looking at the Riemann surface, uh, you look at the higher dimensional Calabi-Yau as quadric bundle, some quadric bundle over C. Uh, and instead of looking at the wrap Kaya category, uh, sorry, C and S is the same thing here. Uh, instead of looking at the wrap Kaya category, you look at the uh, Kaya category of this higher dimensional Calabi-Yau, but you look at compact objects, uh, compact Lagrangians, not um, infinite, uh, not things which go to infinity. Um, so this was this this kind of picture, and you know, just following this conjecture of heuristic of Thomas Yao and Joyce. Um, this this holomorphic volume form should give us a stability condition on this Fukaya category, um, and but it also gave us the correct differential, which gave us the stability condition on here. So that's kind of you get this this gives kind of two different this gives stability conditions on two different categories. At this point. Um, yeah, you can either sort of make it into a correct differential, and then use the stability condition here, or by this. Thomas Yau conjecture, or stay in this higher dimensional world, and it's expected that it gives you a stability condition on here. So uh, I somehow missed the notation. Uh, S, M, U, what is S? Sorry, S is C, yeah. M was the set of uh, zeros and poles. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, it really should be F, maybe S minus M, foliation. I mean, yeah, just this is a wrap for Kayak. The one which you defined previous. Yeah, it's not, this is not so important. But the one where, which I considered in the last lecture. Okay, so now um, Bridget and Smith sort of do, do this in, in realize this program in some sense. Um, and their, their approach is. Uh, based on earlier work of physicists, Gajotra Moore and Neitsky, who looked at quadratic differentials and the kind of counting geodesics, um, essentially. I mean, they didn't think about stability conditions, but um, uh, they thought about things like quivers and uh, you get from these surfaces and triangulations. And so lots of these ideas enter into the work of Burton Smith. Um, but there you restrict to uh, the case of simple zeros, 
and also it needs to have at least one higher order pole. Remember back in the last lecture, simple zeros was the case where which corresponds to three Calabial. Right? So double zero was four Calabial, and then simple pole was one Calabial. So simple zeros just says kind of you want some three Calabial thing. And higher order pole is what um, I talked about this dichotomy. Higher order pole is what makes the dynamics of GOD6 on the Riemann surface uh, a lot simpler. Um, yeah, so in a nutshell, I'm going to do a lot of simplifications of what they do, um, but uh, I need this idea. So if you start with a quadratic differential, um, and then in this picture, these are the zeros. Uh, these lines, the green lines, are a part of the horizontal foliation. So at each zero, you have three leaves of the horizontal foliation, which uh, emanate at that point. Um, the red dots are the higher order poles. So as I said, generically, the geodesics will just tend towards one of the higher order poles to get trapped there. Um, and then the, so from this quadratic differential, you construct an ideal triangulation. Ideal just means that the, the vertices are at the higher order poles in this case. And how do you get this, trans, this triangulation? You take, a, instead of taking these leaves, which start at the, the zeros, you take a leaf, which is generic. So if you imagine there's a kind of quadrilateral here, and inside this quadrilateral, you have a bunch of uh, leaves of the foliation, and one of them is, they're all parallel to this orange line, and you just kind of pick one of them, and that will be the edge of your triangulation. Uh, and you do this for all, all these quadrilaterals, the green quadrilaterals. Um, so for each zero of the quadratic differential, which are these green dots, you get a triangle, uh, this orange triangle. And um, uh, yeah, from the triangulation, the next step is you uh, construct a quiver with potential. Uh, and uh, it's kind of just formal thing. So for each edge of the triangulation, you, you make a vertex. And then for each corner of a triangle, you make an arrow. So uh, each triangle gives you a kind of free cycle in the quiver. Um, and then you add a potential, which is just some, you know, there will be a term for each zero. This, Three, uh, degree three term for each zero. And then also they put uh, around each double pole, they put a term of the potential which goes around the double pole. And there's only, so only terms of potential come from zeros and double poles, higher order poles don't contribute. Um, and then there's a very general construction that whenever you have a quiver with potential, you get a, a three Calabial category with stability condition. So the stability condition also depends on choosing some complex number for each of the vertices, which will be just the integral uh, of the quadratic differential over this uh, orange line. Uh, sorry, over uh, sorry, the dual thing over the, this would be infinite. So you integrate really from this zero to this zero. So kind of uh, the dual so, line, which connects the two zeros. Uh, so uh, you see, it's kind of a mixture of languages because if you have a quiver with a potential, you indeed have a three Calabial category but uh, in order to define stability, you need the geometric piece of data. So this kind of, in terms of quiver, you cannot say what, what kind of stability. Yeah, that's, that's true, yes. Um, so yeah, uh, you, to get the stability condition, you also need to choose a complex number, but at least it gives you actually a T-structure. So it gives you sort of half of the information that you need. Uh, or a stability condition, the part of that is the data of a T-structure and that actually comes from the quiver. Yeah, but to get the full, um, really a quiver with, with knowing some complex numbers for each vertex, which will be integrals of, of these lines connecting zeros, uh, as Jan said, that's really what you need to, to get the stability condition. Yeah, because this is kind of totally discrete data, whereas this is kind of continuous. Um, okay, and uh, yeah, so what the main result is to identify a component of the space of stability conditions on this three Calabial category constructed from the quiver um, with a modular space of quadratic dimensions. Um, and there's this, a little subtlety in there, uh, in a case which they kind of need to spend a lot of time uh, to sort of worry about is that um, they need to add 
certain correct differentials where a simple zero has collided with a double pole um, and therefore forming a, a simple pole. Uh, and this is a bit of an, an artifact of their choice of potential, right? So I said that there's a term in the potential which comes whenever you have a double pole, which they include. Um, if you didn't include that term, then you wouldn't need to add these additional quadratic differentials. So that adding that term kills some objects, and these objects then uh, can sort of have zero mass because they sort of don't exist in the category anymore. Um, and that's sort of why it's because basic stability conditions. So my, my, um, let me ask you another question. Yeah. So of course, if you uh, uh, think this, probably you will, in terms of this um, conic bundle or quadric bundle, uh, 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 as you call it, um, uh, you certainly have a subcategory in whatever Fukaya category is. You have a subcategory generated by um, by by spheres, probably Lagrangian spheres, which correspond mm -hmm. to the, some edges of your um, uh, triangulation story. So then, uh, do you know uh, the Calabi-Yau metric on on this non-compact Calabi-Yau? I mean, can you indeed um, uh, forget about um, this quiver with the potential and just directly define? Uh, this uh, compact uh, category generated by spheres, but it should be subcategory somewhere. So for that, you need. Uh, yeah, so I, that, that's what I'm mentioning here ah. in my last point. Ah, sorry. Okay. So I think there were several questions, right? So the Calabiao, I think it's not easy to write down an actual Calabiao metric for this uh, conic bundle, quadric bundle. But it don't, that's not really important. You can, it doesn't need, it's not important that it's Calabiao. It just needs to be symplectic plus this holomorphic volume form. And for Calabiao, you would demand that the square of the holomorphic volume form or omega of edge omega bar, some fixed power, kind of some constant times uh, symplectic, nth power of the symplectic form. But that's that Calabiao condition is not really important for, it's not expected to be important in this um, Thomas Yao conjecture. Um, and yeah, but I think your main question was about the category, right? Um, yeah. And so what Smith actually shows then, he has another paper where he shows that this free Calabiao category, which you construct from the quiver of potential, uh, is a full subcategory of the Fukaya category of this quadric bundle. I mean, what's a quadric bundle? So there's some choice involved in constructing this, but um, I mean, something that would give, give you back the original quadratic differential. But there's some subtlety here also that it, he puts some fiber over the double pole. So it's, it's actually has, yeah, some kind of non-trivial piece over the double pole, which corresponds to having this term in the potential for double poles. So my, my, my ask you uh, another question. So yeah. this quadratic differential, of course, it's kind of interesting from the point of view of maybe dynamical uh, systems, but um, uh, from the point of view of, I don't know, like, Mm, Higgs bundles is just a rank two mm, a case. Uh, and instead of choosing the quadratic differential, you can choose a spectral curve uh, in the cotangent bundle, which doesn't have to be two to one ramified cover of your curve C, but something more complicated. Uh, and so uh, how far, what's the state of art? How far people do, do they? Uh... Um, yeah, so the uh, so what um, Goncharov did was define some kind of quiver with potential again in this case. Uh, yeah, um, when you have higher rank spectral curve. Yeah. And then Smith showed that this is a subcategory of higher category of this free um, Calabiao. Um, and, and, uh, and you can you can construct because just because it comes from a quiver, it's easy to construct stability conditions. But um, it's not expected that you get all stability conditions um, from this construction. Yeah, uh, uh, because you mentioned that uh, this Bridgeland and Smith and actually uh, Gayota Murinetsky, they, they wanted to have at least one higher order pole for the quadratic differential. Uh, how, mm -hmm. how does it 
uh, how it is converted to the properties of the spectral curve. Uh, can because I, I don't remember Goncharov uh, uh, take kind of requiring anything very special from this spectral curve. It's pure topological. Uh, I think it does have some needs. It, it does need some analog of this condition that to have higher order pole, some a marked point. Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, I guess. I mean, otherwise, it would not expect it to be a, a quiver description of this category. So, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to sort of eventually uh, yeah, talk okay. about some more recent work where I do the, the case without high order poles. And in these cases, you don't get a quiver. So, I think, yeah, it, for a spectral curve to get a quiver, you need some kind of analog of, of having these high order poles. Uh, and I, I'm I'm not exactly sure how, how that's formulated. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it's a higher order pole again of the, the spectral curve somehow diverges at that point. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So here is just this point about, you know, why do they need to add, they need to sort of add to their modulus something that's a bit unusual from the perspective of flat surfaces uh, to add these additional quadratic differentials to the moduli space where a simple zero collides with a simple. With a double pole, um, and you wouldn't need to do that if you didn't add this term and the potential coming from the double pole. But um, they, they do have a good reason for adding this term because it means that the, that the um, potential will be what's called non-degenerate, which means that it's kind of good for a cluster theory. Essentially, if you keep mutating, you can keep mutating your quiver forever. Um, yeah, but just kind of why there's this discrepancy with uh, the result we have about the rap Fukaya category where you don't need to consider these collisions. Um, yeah, and it, their, uh, their approach is also based or uses the results of uh, Labardini Fragoso, who, right, it's not clear that if you now chose a different ideal triangulation, you get some other quiver with potential and you need to show that they're mutation equivalent and this, you get essentially the same triangulated category. If you choose a different triangulation, um, yeah, but yeah. somehow I mean, so I kind of admire quadratic differentials. We are doing something with Maxim about that now. But uh, you see, from the perspective of of, of Higgs bundles, your um, uh, spectral curves of quadratic different just points of the base. Of the Hitchin system, and there is this discriminant over there where everything degenerates. So, uh, from that perspective, are you talking this need to add to the space something that sort of partial compactification of this um, Hitchin base, or rather open part of the Hitchin base, where uh, all kind of uh, um, uh, all, uh, uh, yeah, probably all zeros, no, or maybe even no, no, no. I, I think no, I'm wrong. Yeah, because you are talking about meromorphic story, so it's a bit more complicated. But still, it can be formulated in terms of mm, uh, uh, kind of slight generalization of of the picture which you mentioned, like Hitchin systems. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I mean, people... okay. Was there a question? <laughs> no, I mean it's it's question uh, uh, comment uh, backslash comment. Okay. Yeah, I agree that every everything should be generalized to higher rank. Uh, it just it will be a lot different. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, some things it can be done, but the more topological aspects of it can be done. But the kind of geometric aspects are a different story. Um, yeah, so Smith shows this quiver with potential category is actually a subcategory of the Kaya category uh, of this quadric bundle. Um, so in some sense, this is uh, realizing this this picture that you want stability condition on the Kaya category of this three three yaw. Although that this Thomas yaw conjecture is not exactly proven in this case because you need then to show that our special Lagrangians corresponding to duty six. Maybe that's possible as well. Um, okay, so now we'll talk a bit about 
what's a Calabi L structure? Because I, I don't just then want uh, three Calabi L categories. We'll see that it's actually quite natural to get a different dimension. I mean, in physics, the, the three, three Calabi L is somehow special uh, in string theory. Um, but kind of from a mathematical point of view, you get actually all kinds of different dimensional Calabi L categories. Um, yeah, so what's a Calabi L structure? And so there's different definitions, and this is kind of one of the stronger ones. Um, so first there's something called the, the whole shield complex. Uh, and I'll just write it down for a associative algebra and that's some kind of obvious generalized, or not maybe not obvious, but uh, more or less natural generalization to a infinity algebras. So uh, this complex, so what it computes is it computes um, uh, X, uh, sorry, it computes A tensor A uh, in, the, in the derived sense where tensor product is over as a bimodule. So consider A as a bimodule uh, over A op tensor A, and then tensor that with itself, and then a complex which computes the derived tensor product is this thing, but you can just view it as a kind of hands-on definition that um, an end chain will be something that um, has n plus one elements in the algebra. And um, the, this has two differentials. So the first one, sorry, it should be a T here. Uh, the whole shield differential, uh, what it does is it takes kind of two neighboring, any two neighboring elements in the sequence and takes their product in the uh, algebra. But then it also takes the product of the, of the first and the last. So you need to imagine this as being not really on a line, but it's more like on a circle. And this uh, forms all possible pairs of um, things next to each other. Um, and then you also, so Con discovered something uh, which is sort of analog of the Durham differential. Maybe it has opposite degree. Uh, yeah, maybe the formula is not extremely revealing. It, it means it's, that um, this is kind of comes from a, uh, what's called a cyclic object. So something where the circle acts. Um, and then this is capturing kind of circle action in some abstract sense of this. But here's the formula. Yeah, and this, in the case of infinity algebras, this formula becomes a bit more complicated because you don't just have M2 product, but you also have differential M1 and then these higher operations M3 and so on. Um, where you sort of, so we can combine any number of elements which are next to each other using the infinity maps. And then you, there's some sign, <laughs> which is pretty complicated, but you can write down some generalization of this. Uh, and this concept, this looks pretty much the same in the case of infinity algebras, just maybe some signs are different. Um, yeah, and so then you, what you do is, you, because these have sort of opposite degree, um, you add a formal variable of degree two, traditionally called U. So now look at power series uh, with uh, you know, powers of u uh, in this whole shield complex. And then your differential will be uh, this whole shield differential plus u times uh, the con differential. So this has minus one and this was degree two. So the whole thing is now degree one. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm writing it down as kind of a multiple complex, even though this is in subscript. Uh, it's also kind of just standard convention, I guess, a bit contradictory. Uh, yeah, and this then gets called the negative cyclic complex. Um, yeah, I guess negative also comes from kind of viewing this as a homological complex, a homological one. Um, and there's also something called the cyclic complex, where uh, instead of looking at positive powers of u, you look at negative powers of u. So you add u, and you add its inverse, and then you mod out by positive powers of u. So what's left is all the negative powers of u uh, with the same differential, sometimes dual idea to this one. And then sort of for completeness, so we won't actually use this guy, but uh, you didn't take the quotient here. So you just look at Laurent series, uh, or not Laurent, uh, I guess, uh, what do they call it? It's a power series that also has negative powers of u. Um, yeah, Laurent series. Um, in um, in U with elements of this Hochschild complex, and this is the complex which uh, computes uh, periodic cyclic cohomology. So HP, it's called HP, and this is the cohomology which this computes. Then HH minus 
I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure of that. Maybe written as HH plus or something. Okay, so now I can say what's a Calabial structure. So there's two, again, dual versions of this. Uh, one is for smooth infinity algebras or categories. So uh, homologically smooth means um, that the diagonal bimodule is perfect as bimodule. So it means basically it has some kind of finite resolution in terms of this free bimodule. Um, tensor product here is just over the ground field. So this is the free bimodule and being perfect, right, means that it has some kind of power of extensions and it, maybe you take some uh, direct summand. But yeah, it's kind of like saying it has a finite resolution. Um, as a bimodule. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, for people who know what you're talking about, yeah, this is fine. But for graduate students, it's a good <laughs> major. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, uh, so, should I say what a perfect module is? Um, uh, maybe explain the origin. Yeah. What 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 these strange conditions uh, mean and kind of maybe not in A model uh, but in B model, which where it kind of was uh, derived from. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. So it, in uh, in the B model, so it means if you take um. If you have a, a, a scheme or something um, and you take uh, its category of perfect complexes. So perfect means it's, um, yeah, locally has some finite resolution by vector bundles, some coherent sheaf, which is resolved by vector bundles. Um, and you look at that category of perfect complexes, then so it's some subcategory of the category of all coherent sheaves. And you want to say, how do I, how can I tell from the category if the underlying scheme is either smooth or proper? And it turns out that it leads to this condition. So scheme is smooth if it, uh, the diagonal bimodule has a resolution. And it's proper if the diagonal thing, uh, sorry, we'll have that um, later, come to proper later. Um, yeah, but it just, it, it's motivated by the usual notions in algebraic geometry. Um, to be a smooth or proper scheme. And you think of a triangulated category as some non-cumulative generalization of a scheme. And then these are the analogous conditions or the, the generalized conditions, which generalize these concepts in, in algebraic geometry. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, should I say anything else about this? Are there any questions? I mean, yeah, it's not that important what smoothness is for me, um, I guess, but we'll, we'll see that it's needed to make this, this here to make sense. And also wrap Fukaya categories will be smooth. So that will be our example on the, on the A side. Okay, but yeah, let's see what the definition says. So um, yeah, now a Calabial structure, there's kind of two versions and for, for smooth categories, uh, uh, it's called a left Calabial structure sometimes. Uh, and it's just a, a degree minus D cycle in this negative cyclic complex. So right D, this is really shifting down K. So this, this sort of sits in degree minus D. So if you have some a map from this to this, uh, it's just a degree minus D cycle in this negative cyclic complex. And um, well, it should be in some sense non-degenerate, um, which is to say that uh, if you take, if you look at the definition of the negative cyclic complex, then it has as a quotient, if you model out by positive powers of u, it has as a quotient just the usual Hochschild complex without the u. Right. So whenever you have a cycle in here, you can just look at the kind of constant term, uh, the u, u u power to the zero power term, get an element in the uh, Hochschild complex. And here, exercise here, um, if you go through the you know, some categorical nonsense adjunctions, you can see that having a uh, a cycle in this Hochschild complex means that um, I get a, a morphism from uh, what's called A, this sort of dual 
bimodule. So what's R -hom as a as a bimodule from the diagonal bimodule to the free. It's the dual in the sense that you're taking home to the free rank one bimodule. And having this uh, Hochschild cycle uh, means that you get a morphism by modules from this thing, this A shriek, uh, to A itself. So that's, yeah, I can go through some adjunctions to see that. Um, and the requirement is that this should be a quasi isomorphism, so kind of non degenerate. Right, but it's it's only a condition really on the on the so this is something that sort of lifts. It's only at a condition on the degree zero part uh, or, or like what a constant term of this this cycle. And but you know to have this lift to all powers of u, it's some additional condition uh, on on the on the constant term. So the exercise for graduate students would be uh, to take x to be a smooth projective, yeah, which is homologically smooth and proper, and to show that this, whatever this left and whatever right, in this case doesn't matter, uh, they correspond to existence of certain pairing on X groups in the uh, right category of coherence shifts. Yes, yeah, some non-degenerate pairing. Yeah, it's a bit stronger than this uh, non-degenerate pairing. But um, yeah, definitely a consequence of this is that um, you have this sort of serial duality in your category, at least in the yeah. proper. So here, maybe you should do the proper case also. Uh, and this is sort of easy, actually. Maybe we should start with this one. Uh, but this is, this is, I think, more important. Um, proper just means that it's a essentially finite dimensional A infinity algebra. Um, but well, what really needs to be finite dimensional is just the cohomology. And that's saying it's a perfect complex over the ground field. So an A infinity algebra with finite dimensional cohomology is called proper. Um, but you can see it's kind of analogous to this condition. Um, and then a Calabial structure in this case is a dual thing. You have a co-cycle now on the cyclic complex instead of the, um, uh, so it's a co-cycle in the sense it's a functional on, on cycles, yeah map from this cyclic complex to k. Now this here sits in degree d. Um, so this is kind of like an integration of, so this means really you have something which can take degree d cycles to two scalars. So this is like integrating over fundamental class or something. Um, and uh, yeah, so here, right, here it's kind of the dual picture. Here you have the negative cyclic complex, here you just have the cyclic complex. Um, and if you have a functional on here, you can see it restricts to, in this usual, in the cyclic complex now, Hochschild complex is a, a subcomplex. Here it was a quotient. So you can restrict to the subcomplex. You get a co cycle on so getting the higher order structure, you get a co cycle on, um, on the Hochschild complex. And the requirement is that this is, induces a quasi-isomorphism between A and its vector space dual um, shifted by D. So here, this is just um, the dual, which also happens to be a bimodule, um, but it's just a dual vector space. And this element gives you a morphism of bimodules uh, of degree D, and that should be a quasi-isomorphism. So this is closer to what Jan said, that right, so A this looks more like Poincaré duality, just that you have a pairing between A and A um, of degree D, which is non-degenerate. Um, yeah, and, and that's kind of interplay between these. If you have a, a category with this um, smooth Calabial structure, and now you look at finite dimensional modules, then um, it's a proper category, and it has this right Calabial structure. Okay, um, any questions about this slide? Um, it's okay, maybe good to look at the simplest example. Uh, where this will be relevant for us looking at, uh, right, we're interested in quadrics, so cotangent, symplectically just cotangent bundles of spheres. So uh, let's look at the cotangent bundle of a sphere and look at a single fiber, uh, which is some 
which is Lagrangian inside here, uh, inside G star SN. And I will say to you that generates the Fukaya category. So get, get all of the Fukaya category by looking at perfect complexes over, uh, over this unit algebra of L. So let's look at X. Let's look at morphism from L to itself in the Fukaya category. Um, and then this, again, by this is, in general, the cohomology of the loop space. So this is true for not just spheres, but for cotangent bundles in general. And if you look at uh, the fiber and you look at what are its endomorphisms in the Fukaya category, then you get cohomology of the loop space. And uh, yeah, maybe you, yeah, this is where I use this assumption that it's at least a two sphere, otherwise you get something slightly different here. But uh, for n bigger than or equal to two, cohomology of this loop space is uh, just the polynomial algebra, uh, algebra of polynomials in some variable which has degree one minus n. Um, so for example, right, if it's S2, I get degree minus two, S3, I get degree minus, sorry, minus one, and S3, I get degree minus two. Um, What's wrong with the circle? Uh, you get also negative powers of t. No, it depends on the definition of your category. What 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 do you understand as a cotangent bundle? I mean, anyway. Uh, well, if it's S1, then it's cotangent where... bundle is the torus, right? Um, it's, it's, I mean, this is this is still true, but I'm saying this is not true. You get negative uh, powers of t. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this is more general. This is, in fact, true for any cotangent bundle. At least compact thing, but um, yeah, just for this, I need n bigger than or equal to two. Um, yeah, this is an example of something that's smooth, uh, which again, here you can sort of check it by hand uh, that uh, you have. You can, you know, just follow the definitions from the previous slides, see that uh, you have this um, element in a negative cyclic complex. Um, I mean, this, this is true for more generally if you take rad Fukaya categories of symplectic manifolds, uh, you get Calabia in the smooth sense. Yeah, and kind of dually, if instead of taking the cotangent fiber, you take something compact, uh, for example, the zero section, then um, X from that object to itself in the Fukaya category will be just cohomology of SN. Kind of a lot simpler. You don't take the loop space, uh, which is of course k uh, kind of just sitting degree zero and n. And uh, this is now a proper, well, just two dimensional. So it's proper and it's uh, Calabi-Yau. Uh, and here, this is kind of easier to see in some sense, right? So Calabi-Yau here just means that uh, if I shift it down by d, then I get the vector space tool, which is easy to see uh, in this case. Um, okay, so th these are kind of basic examples. Uh, obviously, this generalizes if you have oriented manifolds. Um, but by point duality, you still have this uh, Calabi Yau property. Um, yeah, now I want to explain how do you how do you get so how, how why are these Rad Fukaya categories related to Calabi Yau categories, which look pretty different. Um, and it might be useful for someone who's more sort of algebraic geometry minded to to look at um, look at the mirror symmetry analog. So look at on the other side of homological mirror symmetry, look at algebraic geometry, um, and then we'll look at the the A side, where, where, which I'm actually interested in. But yeah, it can be kind of useful to to think about this on the on the B side. And yeah, I'll also take the simplest examples. So let's just take this singular affine conic just union of x and y axis inside the affine plane. Um, and uh, as my category, I take um, the bounded derived category of coherent sheaves on this singular conic. Uh, and yeah, this might be confusing. It's actually homologically smooth. Uh, and I said before, homologically smooth <laughs> sort of generalizes the smoothness of the variety, whereas this is obviously not smooth. Um, and the point is here, I'm taking all coherent sheaves and not just 
perfect uh, perfect complexes of sheaves. If I took perf here, then this would not be true. Um, but since I'm taking code, this is sort of always homologically smooth for some weird reason. Um, and it's also one Calabial um, in this smooth sense, uh, basically because it's sort of one dimensional. Thing. And yeah, just for example, if I just what what does this category look like? If I take an obvious object in here is the skyscraper sheep at the origin. Um, and if I look at its unit algebra x from that to itself, it's this infinite dimensional thing that's kind of unbounded above. So it's the non-commutative polynomial algebra in two generators alpha beta, which both have degree one, and um, which squares. It's kind of it's, it's causal dual to the algebra functions on this thing. So this alpha squared beta squared is kind of dual to x y equals y x equals zero. Um, now on the other hand, I can deform this. This has Right, this sits in an obvious family where instead of putting zero here, I put T. Um, and then this is a family where the affine, smooth affine conic is degenerating to union of two lines. And I can, so the, the whole family, the total space of the family is just the plane. And I take, I can take the category of coherent sheaves on that now instead on this total family. And it's obviously homologically smooth again. And uh, it's even, uh, yeah, and it's, um, yeah, the point is here, it's co is the same as perf in this case. Um, and it's two calabial because, yes, yeah, it's a plane. And now if I look at th this same object now in a different category, so I still look at the skyscraper sheep at the origin, but now it sort of, it doesn't know that, it's, I mean, it's just a point in the plane. It doesn't know that it's sitting at the intersection of these two axes. Uh, so it's just um, has a finite dimensional unit algebra, which is this usual causal algebra, what you, what you get um, two generators degree one, and it's the commutative algebra. So alpha squared and beta squared are zero. Alpha beta is minus beta alpha. Right, I'm being kind of very careful here, but always these uh, brackets here mean the super commutative algebra generated by it, whereas these angle brackets here mean the non commutative algebra. Because right, in here, it's not true that alpha beta is minus beta alpha, which is why I don't want to put these brackets. Um, okay, and then there's also what actually, so this will correspond, the point is this will correspond to the, some rap Fukaya category, the C0. And I'll, 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 from this rap Fukaya category, there will be some formal way of going to a Calabiao category, and that Calabiao category will. Uh, not be the C, but it said it will be things which are supported, uh, subcategory of things which are supported on this singular guy on the so sheaves uh, on the plane, and their support is on the union of the two axes. And this is now, I mean, this is still Calabial 2, and I can look at the kind of, uh, I look at things which are supported on just points. So if I look at those sort of objects, then this is a proper to Calabial category. If I look at the subcategory where I don't look at kind of things like the um, the structure sheaf of the axes or something like that. If I just look at things supported on really sets of points, I get a proper to Calabial category. So uh, I can have a question. Uh, on the A side, you also can. Um, uh, do you can uh, you can consider uh, something singular yeah yeah the next slide will be this whole story on it ah, okay 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 yeah mm -hmm. uh, but just you know maybe if somebody is more familiar with the algebra geometric world this will be helpful um, but uh, yeah, i mean you can also forget about it so yeah what's the what's the a side picture so i take a p star s1 the cylinder and i remove a point so I mean, it's a three punctured sphere, but uh, the, the punctures play a kind of slightly different role because of the grading. So I choose a foliation where, which extends over this additional puncture, um, which means that kind of, yeah, the, the three punctures have kind of slightly different structure of the foliation around these. So the, the Z grading on the category 
preserved. Now, the Z-grade category is not invariant under permuting these three punctures on the sphere. Um, and then the rat Fukaya category of this thing is uh, equivalent to this uh, bounded rat category of and chiefs on this X0, which was union of X and Y axis, singular affine conic, some very special case of homological mirror symmetry. And right in on the in, on the B side, we saw that it has this obvious deformation where you also include the smooth conics. And uh, in um, on, on the A side, that also has a very natural geometric interpretation. It means kind of removing that, that puncture. So the Fukaya category, you get your structure constants by counting disks. And uh, well, if this point is removed, then disks are kind of not allowed to. Um, intersect this point or, or cover this point, right? But now you could um, start counting disks which cover this uh, puncture and count them by a factor t to the k, where k is the number of times it could be some immersed disk, and the number of times it um, lives over this puncture is the exponent k. So if you count these additional disks, you get some new structure constants and now some power series, in this case, just polynomials in t. And this gives you a deformation. And it's the same deformation that we had on the uh, on the B side. So removing this puncture, the, the general fiber of that deformation will then be the Fukaya category of the cylinder, which is uh, the same as DB of the of the smooth conic, which is just a C star. Um, yeah, the point will be to just generalize this to the case where you have um, more complicated surfaces. Um, but there's one kind of little subtlety. Um, I'm getting a little bit low on time, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, Jan, do you do? Can I go a bit over time, or should I um, kind well, of yeah, well, stop the lecture you, at some you, point you, and then do you, the you remainder? You can of... go a little bit over time, but not not too much. So then you can kind of maybe say whatever yeah, I'm on. necessary to say, and then return to some technique so I, I, I think you, you want to formulate some result or at least you promised to formulate some result about the relation of wrapped uh, Fukaya which you constructed last time and Calabiao which um, yeah so I'm kind of three-fourths into my lecture I guess um, and I'll just say what the what, what where we're going and then I'll continue next time maybe I'll Say a bit. Um, so up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me not mention this. Um, so the point will be that this, this generalizes if you have a surface with punctures, then there will be a deformation of the Rad Fukaya category. And it's a deformation over some power series ring where now this is not necessarily degree zero variable, but it's in degree two minus d, where d is the Calabiao dimension of the category which you're constructing. But it's the same idea that you're now counting disks, which are covering these additional punctures. Um, and uh, using this, yeah, I, I should probably, I'll, I'll talk about this in detail then um, next time. But uh, yeah, the point is, so using this deformation, you can, uh, again, you can look at the things which correspond to these sort of torsion shapes, things supported on the singular, uh, on the singular conic, but kind of living on this total space of the deformation. Um, and that gives you a Calabiao category. And you can, so this is the result. So you can transfer then um, stability conditions from the Rapukaya category to this um, Calabiao category. Um, and in this, in this preprint of mine, it's uh, actually I restrict to the case where it's three Calabiao but there's something similar for, for higher dimensional Calabiao. So this is the case when you have a quadratic differentials with simple zeros and simple poles. And then what I show is that you get a stability condition. So I construct some three Calabiao category in this using some deformation of the rad Fukaya category. And um, I show that a component of the space of stability conditions of this three Calabiao category is 
uh, corresponds to quadratic differentials. I mean, I expect this category to be a subcategory of the Fukaya category of this quadratic bundle, uh, three-dimensional Calabial, but um, yeah, that's not proven. And it's, it's a bit more difficult to, would be to show this than in the, the case, case that Smith looked at. Uh, it's not exact. Um, yeah, but then this, this will be the, the, the main result that, um, yeah, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll say next time in more detail, I think these last, uh, because there were some ideas there. Uh, yeah, but, but this is what I, we want to get. I, I kind of say, uh, the idea is that you uh, construct your three Calabiao intrinsically. You 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 start with the Riemann surface with this marked points. You have also whatever quadratic differential, and then you consider deformations by uh, simply by counting some um, extra disks which are not present, which are prohibited in this Riemann surface story. Yeah. And, and this is this deformed category is your three Calabial category. But what about the stability? And because your quadratic differential certainly does not know anything about these disks. Or does it, how you- uh, Well, yeah, so you show that it, it, these categories are different, but they, they kind of, they are only different in sort of higher degree and it doesn't affect the, the abelian category. So, Ah. Um, you can show that in general, they, they fit into some kind of a junction. There's an adjunction between them of a certain type. And whenever you have this, you can just, the space components of the space of stability conditions of one category will be identified with components of the other. Ah, okay, but this is the kind of, of ab abstract result, but uh, which you cannot kind of illustrate geometrically. Was for, uh, well, for well, it means it was, it, I mean, it does have geometric meaning in some sense on the on the right on the B side. If you thought you you have this a stability condition, let's say you have a stability condition on this category of sheaves on this cross uh, singular affine conic, and mm -hmm. now instead you wanted stability conditions on sheaves on the plane supported on this uh, singular conic. Yeah, on the B side, it is fine. I'm right. trying so to, I want, yeah. to, to think in terms of the A side. And I understand that um, you can integrate your quadratic differential, whatever, square root, central mm -hmm. charge. You can integrate over some, let's call, one-dimensional objects. I don't know, like curves, whatever, like having one form, you can integrate it over a curve, this is fine. But when you construct your three Calabiao category purely kind of formally by deforming, yeah, like deforming structure constants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so it does not, in this way, it does not sit, I mean, it's not clear how it is related to your quadric bundle. And therefore, it's not clear how, uh, what should be the central charge for this deformed three Calabial category. I understand that, well, what, what does it? Uh, uh, well, they have the same K0 group. Uh, right, it's the same K0, okay, so it's the same. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, in general, right. this, yeah, this. The middle yeah. degree homology of this conic bundle can be computed, I think. This is like Leray's Leray spectral sequence or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so in terms of stability, yeah, there is no difficulty. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a bit dubious as to is this really the a subcategory of the Fukaya category? And... Yeah. Uh -huh, okay. Um, <laughs> it, because it, I'm doing right. some kind of more formal thing, but. Uh, more questions? Uh, all right, if there are no more questions, so thanks Fabian. And tomorrow it's kind of official uh, M seminar, although in a little bit different time, but you probably, you can go over the time without kind of apologizing. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
All um, right. I'll try not to do it though. Yeah, but I'll, I want to come back to this and then talk uh -huh. about this. Okay, okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh,